Hi everyone, um, we're here at Celtic Park about an hour after full time. <laughs> what a bloody day, Ewan. I mean, for in terms of Saturday 3pm games, that is right up there. 4-0 it finished, it could have been 14-0. Exactly. Brilliant performances around the pitch. Mm-hmm. Um, I've just spoken to Ange Postacoglu, so that's why I'm positively beaming. <laughs> and obviously because I get to spend the next 20 minutes or so with Ewan. So oh. just give us your, your thoughts on today, mate. We've got Celtic Park behind us, hopefully you can see it. The sun is setting. Um, it's just been a lovely day, both you know on the pitch and, and off it as well. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you, mate. I'm in an extremely good mood. Um, yeah, for a just, change. For a change. Uh, just utter domination, start to finish. Uh, I don't, I, I don't think Ross County were ever in that game. Um, and it's one of those where you know we've had these games before against like Hearts and Livingston, where teams come and oh they're they're in good form, all this, all that. We just absolutely batter them, start to finish. Uh, just a really, really satisfying win. Just something I'm thinking of before we get into the game. Do you think Celtic play as well as that if we we have a midweek European game prior to it? Because <laughs> I know I'm kind of um. I'm kind of having a wee a wee go here, but <laughs> I, I, I on, in all seriousness, I think as much as we'd like to be in the Europa League, I think this is exactly why some people were kind of thinking, you know, focusing on the league, having a whole week to to focus on a league game is is a good thing because Celtic came out tonight. We looked fresh. You know, we looked lively. We looked really, really motivated today. Sure. Ange actually said it. You know, after the, the after the game, and I'll, I'll get onto some of his comments afterwards. But he said that you know he had a good feeling about today. Just felt that everyone was going to be up for it, and the, the team certainly showed that right from the start. Yeah, I, I mean, I think the environment you know plays a lot into a sunny day in Glasgow. Is always you know three game kick out. It's it's rare for one thing, yeah. But also you know it's uh, it just has something about it today. Just like. Every kind of second in the build-up to that match, I was just getting more... The anticipation was building and building. Mm-hmm. The fans seemed in a fantastic mood, even from the morning um, coming in. And it's just, yeah, it was great. In terms of midweek European, um, I don't know. I know you've been a wee bit cheeky, but I think the best frame of reference is probably the Seville year. We actually finished that season with six games on the trot. Mm. Um, and the squad we have now, obviously it's hypothetical, but um, I think we showed and showed in the substitutions that the squad we have to deal with any sorts of challenges I mean we practically played different midfields different flanks at times so mm. I, no, I think we would have been absolutely fine and the, the thing that got me as well today I know we're going into an international break but mm. there was no other game in the horizon for Celtic it wasn't as if Ange had to take players off early today no. we could put our full efforts on scoring as many goals could probably have had a, a few more but um, obviously four we would have settled for that before the game absolutely People, you know, watching this, dare I say it, probably around the world, down under especially, where where they're probably having better weather than here. (laughs) But today was like, it's maybe not feeling it at the moment because it's getting a wee bit cooler and, you know, the windy and my hair's probably all over the place. But it was properly warm today. I mean, we're in mid-March and I'm no... um, Who who was that? The weather guy? Fish? Michael Michael Fish. Fish. I'm no Michael Fish, but... (laughs) I think it was about as warm as that Michelin game in the summer. I mean, in that standing section today with the sun right on you, it was properly roasting. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, everyone had their their tops off today. I was going to ask if you went tops (laughs) off, yeah. Apart from me, um, and nobody wants to see that at all. And I actually asked Ange about that after the game, um, uh, you know, about the taps off. And he said, quote, you guys are crazy, 15 degrees and your shirts are off, which just about summed up what we got today from the uh, from the Celtic support. But if we go on to the game, because that's what people really care about, yep. you could go through the whole team and, and praise players. Who, who kind of stood out for you today, or is that an unfair question? I mean, you know, yeah, we had to start with Jack Marcus. He was absolutely phenomenal. Um, 12 goals now? I believe so, yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, All of them one-touch finishes. I know everyone loves me rolling out that stat. <laughs> um, first consecutive hat-tricks at Celtic Park, by the way, since Henrik Larson. Right. I'm reliably informed. Um, and the other to get consecutive hat tricks, I believe, that has played for Celtic was Anthony Stokes. But one of those was, uh, I think that was with Falkirk. Um, so incredible. Really a historic day for, for him on a personal level. He was everywhere. He It wasn't just his goals, it was the pressure that he put. We saw this against Rangers. Mm-hmm. The pressure that he puts on uh, defenders is, is second to none. He really brings others into play around him. Uh, Jota and Maida, I thought, were excellent yeah. supplying him uh, for the entirety of the match, uh, or certainly until they both came off. So. Um, he was outstanding. He was absolutely outstanding. Too. F- favorite goal out of the three? Pro- probably a, a pretty easy question, isn't it? It's got to be the one where it rebounds to him and he gets that second. Come header. on, uh, the, the first one. one. That, but the technical, the technical excellence of that, though, the fact that he manages to get to contort his body in such a way and get his head behind it and, and nestle it into the corner from from there, and at the speed that, that has. To, I mean, obviously the first goal is a beautiful, a beautiful goal. Excellent. Now, 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 he, now he says that. Obviously, uh, the, 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 first, the first goal was the first goal was incredible. I mean, yeah. Jota's playing left hand side, crosses it back post, and mm. it was one of those you knew. 
yeah. the minute that Yakimakis oh, yeah. was you know had his eye on it that it was in the back of the net but it was a brilliant goal probably the one thing we maybe wanted to see a little bit more from him there was in his early parts at the club you know balls are coming in and he maybe wasn't quite you know getting in the end of headers but two headed right. goals today mm-hmm. um, you know and, and took the penalty well for the third goal this guy is a proper player I mean 12 goals now for Celtic is a, is a mega tally and as I keep mm-hmm. saying all of them are, are one touch finishes I know I keep going on about it but I just can't get over how, how cool a stat that is I mean, that's what, 11 goals in 2022 alone. Mm. That's phenomenal. And it's, it's it, I'm not going to say it feels predetermined or anything lofty like that, but it's just exactly what we need is at exactly the right time. Um, and for all the January signings have been excellent and they have been. Um, obviously, it's a bit of a delayed reaction. Jack Max has had a couple of false starts along the way, injury mm. problems, you know, a couple of moments where, where the fans weren't, you know, particularly buying into me yet. I just, I'm so satisfied for him because he's, he's delighting his supporters. And, and again, Two consecutive hat tricks at Celtic Park is no mean feat. That's going to go down in, in the books. Yeah, it's excellent. And, you know, a couple at Tannadice as well. Eight goals in his last three starts. I mean, that, this guy's hitting kind of new heights. Who else then? You, you've touched mm-hmm. on on um, Jota and Maida. You could go through so many players. I mean, yeah. I, I, I thought, I thought I know he didn't start the game, but I thought Matt O'Reilly was just, I mean, how, mm-hmm. how good is this guy? He had one touch in the second half inside the box that came to him mm-hmm. and he, he kind of you know to use that word again he contorted his body took it past the player mm-hmm. but the amount of kind of slide rule passes he had yeah. I, I, I think this guy has to be starting for us going forward I know everyone loves Tom Rogic we'll, yep. get, we'll wait and see what, what his injury's like it was a terrible challenge but mm-hmm. and Hatati was excellent today but I just think Matt O'Reilly has to be starting for Celtic the guy is just like I mean, I know I'm not a great judge of a footballer. Everyone watching knows that. I would but, disagree, Hamish. But, so you've, got a good, you've got your finger on a pulse, I'd say. Well, thank but. you. But I, I think Matt O'Reilly is, is different level. Like, I, I think he's, you know, potentially the best player in that Celtic squad. I just, I think he's Warm. unbelievable. I mean, I, I think he'll, he'll be a Denmark international. Oh, for, yeah. And, you yeah, know, absolutely. They're, they're one of the best countries in the world. So I think that's what yeah. we're dealing with. Well, especially in midfield, they've got a lot of really good midfield players. Yeah. For my money, he almost scored the goal of the season today. Mm. There was brilliant. Talk to me about that because there was people you know watching at home might not have got this, but there was a standing ovation yeah. after that attack. And yeah. I always think moments like that are powerful at Celtic Park. You could tell the fans were just loving what they were watching. It was mm-hmm. Hatate Maida, Hatate Maida, Taylor, Jota all involved, I think. Yeah. Um, but just the pass and the interplay, the, the back heels, just the connection that those players have. And again, you know, I know we're in March now, and I know they've had a lot of time to train together. A, a hell of a lot of games played together, but yeah. The amount that they've gelled is unbelievable, uh, and uh, you know if O'Reilly just just knocks that a little a couple of inches to the left, that would have been my goal of the season undoubtedly. But yeah, he was excellent when he came on. Um, but that's the luxury of you don't necessarily have to pick Rogic or O'Reilly because they're both going to be so effective and so well. We hope Rogic is going to be okay, but when they're both fit, you can play them alternate games. You can play them for situations. But yeah. I mean, I think if I had to, if if you have to pick one of them. Um, on form, it's yeah, it's O'Reilly for me. It's almost an embarrassment of riches now. We're yeah. at stage early in the season where we had nobody. Mm-hmm. You know, we're playing you know B team players now. When yeah. we've got one game a week, you know, you're almost struggling to, to fit in all the players that want to play. David yeah. Turnbull came back into the free today. looked looked like he'd never been away. Mm-hmm. The way David Turnbull came in, got a great reception as well. Right, I know you know you'll be wanting to, to hear what Ange Postecoglou had to say. Unfortunately, um, due to just time constraints and wanting to get this video out as quickly as possible, um, we've not got the audio for you today. We're going to do a live show tomorrow with John and Stevie, um, play the audio clips and have a chat about that. Um, in terms of what Ange had to say today, um, obviously really pleased with the performance, the result. Um, the, the media obviously trying to, to ask about you know Rangers and the title race and bring them into it. Ange wasn't having any of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, asked if he would watch Rangers tomorrow. He said, nah, my Sundays are dictated by my wife and kids. There'll be a battle for the remote control. <laughs> so that shows what we're dealing with um, and yeah just in general you know I said I asked him about the fans and he was really complimentary of, of how the, the, the fans had turned up and done their job as well Carol Starfelt asked about Rangers as well his big quote was we're not thinking about Rangers so you know I, I asked Ange about this um, laser focus this Celtic team seemed to have I was been reading his book recently and he talks about this intoxicating feeling when everybody at the club is pulling in the same direction to achieve yeah. something special and I asked him if he feels that with this Celtic team at the moment and he says you know this Celtic team is, is really driven and they've had to be in all season right from the start yeah, yeah. because of the challenges that have, have gone away um, yeah just other other thoughts in today um, I mean just the extent of the domination that we had over Ross County and again this was a team that was maybe in form um, just looking at the stats here I know a lot of, not everyone likes stats but we completed 660 passes today guess how many they had whole game they completed 89. 
they had none of the ball. Do you think none of it? Do you think we had a single player who had more than their team? Maybe Starfelt because he averages I, yeah. over ninety. I would have thought so. I would have thought so. And, and you know, a lot of that stuff is anorak and maybe it doesn't necessarily matter, but just shows you know the just the 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 tactical focus this team have the response. You know, every player is is has risen to the challenge of playing under Ange. Players that were here before, players that arrive here after. Mm-hmm. Um, and I guess you know, there's a sense of like you know there could have been more goals in this game. There really could have been, um, and maybe this counts or it doesn't count as a sort of you know doing that's been on the on on the cards for quite a while. But just in terms of all the hype going into this game, all the talk about how cha- much of a challenge it would be, and respect to Ross County, they've they've been in excellent form. But just it was an absolute battering. It was really really satisfying. Yeah, I mean, obviously the the, the game is is what you know what happens and you know several players impresses. I think there was so many. I thought Hatati was back to his best. He was there was a, yeah. a five minute spell in the first half where he just had two or three passes that were just out of this world. Mm-hmm. I felt we were really really direct today. There wasn't a lot of sideways passing as there sometimes has been in these kind of matches. Mm-hmm. I felt we were really on the front foot today. You know, you could go through the whole team. The midfield was excellent. McGregor was was brilliant, unlucky not to get a goal. Definitely. The centre backs were really good. Starfield's just getting more and more confident coming out for the back. <laughs> but I'm sorry. I mean, I know I know it all comes from the from the performance, but the support today was just was just amazing. They're I mean, brilliant. that's as loud as I've heard it for a, a 3 p.m. game in a long, long time. Mm-hmm. Um, as I say, it was roasting today. You know, everybody virtually in that standing section, apart from me, had their top off. And leave, leave a comment if you want Hamish to go taps off for the next Celtic home game. Don't leave a comment leave if a you comment. want me to go taps leave off. But um, the the atmosphere was incredible today, and it, it it really does feel like we're on we're on the verge of something really special here. Yeah. I mean, I tweeted earlier if that's the atmosphere today, can you imagine what the atmosphere would be like if we actually go and win this bloody league? But mm-hmm. there's a long way to go. I think you know it looks six points clear. That game at Ibrox now is looming large and yeah. that, to me, I mean, I know it's the easy thing to do. It's a huge game coming up. I honestly think that's that's the one you look okay. at. I think that's the defining match of this whole season. And I think if we can come away, for, if we win there, if we win that, it's going to be incredibly difficult for them to come back. We can kill off the league pretty much, I think. I know people might think that's a mega statement. <laughs> I think if we win at Ibrox, we can kill off the league. If they win, obviously, we're still going to be top of the league we're still going to be in a a good position but not quite as good position if we draw it's firmly firmly in our hands and ours to lose at that stage so we're dealing with that and we're kind of going down this road and you know to use that analogy we've got three different roads to choose from and we're about to see what what route Celtic are going to take I think it's a a huge game I know we've got the international break to come but off the back of today if that today means anything Mm -hmm. the team couldn't be going into it in, in much finer fettle could they? No, exactly, and we've still got we've still got huge players come back. I know I, I, I you know I, I beat this drum almost every time we talk now, Hamish, but we have big players still to come. I mean, Kyogo coming back is going to be just the, the you know a slice on the cake. Um, and honestly, I don't know on the on the basis of today, does he just walk into the team again? I don't, I don't think he starts at Ibrooks. No. I don't I don't know necessarily. You can't, you can't, you know? I don't think you can take out a guy who's scoring all those goals at the moment. But I mean, no. Kyogo. Let's not forget about how bloody good Kyogo is. Exactly. He's, he's incredible. Mm-hmm. Um, no, I just... Do you, do you agree with me about that Ibrooks game? I do. That it's like yeah. a, a, an absolute defining match. Yeah. But I, I, what I'm taking more solace from at the moment is the fact that you, you've said, you know, the league's in our hands and we've got control. And nothing about the preparation for this season screamed control or planning or anything like that. Yeah. And we, we need to... I, I know it's, it's something I repeat myself a, a lot, but... From where we've come, this season has been it's been incredible. Whatever happens at the end, the turnaround has been absolutely staggering. Um, and and credit to every single one of those players out there today. They were just they were magnificent. Just a, an excellent, excellent day. I think you can both tell we've enjoyed ourselves. I'm probably going to be burnt for the next week or so. I'm Scottish. I don't really take too kindly to the weather. But I, mean, I don't know if you can properly see Celtic Park in the background, Ewan. But I mean, how bloody lovely. Does that look? It just looks. It looks absolutely lovely. It's picturesque, my man. And uh, you know, people are streaming away. The smile on people's faces right from from kickoff today. In fact, before the game, yep. as I keep going back to, it was a party atmosphere today, and that's probably a little bit misleading because there's still a long way to go in this league. But I think we got a sample today of what could be to come if Celtic can get over the line. I just thought so many good performances today. Final comment on today before we we go and leave people to their Saturday night. I love this football club. <laughs> no. um, I am just I'm just delighted with that, and I'm annoyed there's an international break now because I just Same. I want us to play again tomorrow. To be honest, um, uh, I'm annoyed by it, but you know if that's the only thing I'm annoyed by today, that's absolutely fine. Uh, excellent performance, excellent tactics, excellent 
excellent team. Great stuff. We will have, as I say, the audio from both Ange Postacoglu and Carol Starfelt on the video tomorrow. Some really good lines from Ange there. Um, my questions to them. So tune in for that tomorrow. Obviously, we'll have loads of chat as well with Stevie and John about what um, what we witnessed today at Celtic Park. But six points clear for now. A long, long way to go. But a very special afternoon at Celtic Park and a taster of what could be to come. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Um, give us a sub if you've not managed to do it yet. We're back tomorrow night.